October is National Bullying Prevention Month in the United States, and the Encore episode today is with an expert who truly put the phrase bullying on the map. I originally recorded with Barbara Coloroso in fall of 2021 as we were newly out of the pandemic lockdown. So some of what we talk about in this episode may feel a little old news-ish. However, what is not old news is the wisdom and expertise that she shares when it comes to dealing with cyber harm and bullying. I hope you'll enjoy this Encore episode and please feel free to share it with teacher friends and anyone else who works with children. There's also a link to resources in our show notes. Welcome to the Healthy Screen Habits Podcast. I'm Hillary Wilkinson. Whether you're starting your parenting journey with a newborn or looking to connect with your teen on technology, let's learn some new healthy screen habits together. I learned very early when teaching and parenting to reserve my veto power for things that really matter. When a student or one of my own children comes to me with a request that I'm not sure about, I often use two magic words that help me do this. The magic words are convince me. This phrase serves to do two things. It requires critical thinking by the child doing the request, and perhaps most importantly in the moment, it buys me time to figure out how I really feel about what the request is. These words convince me also help retain respect for when I do say no. In short, this approach has served me well throughout professional as well as personal life, and today I am thrilled to both talk to, thank, and introduce our listeners to the person who taught me the power of using the phrase convince me. She's truly one of the OG. For the past 49 years, Barbara Coloroso has been speaking, educating, and teaching on parenting, creating positive school climates, bullying, grieving, explaining nonviolent conflict resolution, and more. She's appeared on the BBC, Oprah, and CNN, just to name a few. In fact, she told me she just got off the phone with our attorney general, and I can't believe she's making time for us today. Her life work of putting kids first in her organization, Kids Are Worth Worth It is the cornerstone for many in education and early childhood development. I'm so completely honored to welcome to the Healthy Screen Habits podcast, Barbara Coloroso. Oh, thank you, Hillary, for that introduction. Yes, the three alternatives to know. Yes, later, give me a minute. And most importantly, especially for our older kids, convince me. Yes, and I'm I'm deep in the parent I'm in the throes of teenage parenting, so it is That's it. <laughs> it is in my back pocket all the time. <laughs> okay, so Barbara, I've shared some of your achievements and professional work already. I feel like my parenting could benefit from talking about so many different things with you, but for the sake of our limited time and our audience, I would really like to focus on this work that you have done surrounding cyberbullying. And I think when we start talking about specific areas, it's always good to lay out some framework for definitions so that we're all on the same page. That being said, could you share what is cyberbullying? And equally important, what is it not? Okay, um, it's very important that we understand that because one of my roles uh, since I wrote the book, The Bully, The Bully, The Not-So-Innocent Bystander, and it was William Burroughs so eloquently said, there are no innocent bystanders. What were they doing there in the first place? Um, I have found step one is we have to explain to parents and educators that not everything is bullying, But bullying is most importantly, not conflict and how often we mistake that. So looking at what bullying is, it's a conscious, willful, deliberate, hostile activity intended to harm where the perpetrators get pleasure from the pain that's inflicted on the target. When two kids are fighting, they both often get hurt. We have to teach them how to handle it nonviolently. But there are four ways and three means of bullying. And the four ways, it's a one-time event, significant event, 
Continuous repeated over time hazing all ritualized initiations that dehumanize anybody and cyber or technology or digitally enhanced bullying. And the three means to do that is verbal, physical, and relational. Cyber is the one that has impacted our young people the most today uh, because you can use verbal, you can threaten physical, and you can shun, isolate, lock out of a chat room, uh, remove from an internet gaming site a kid you want to target. And now we have the, the online world and the offline world. We used to say online and real, but it's the online offline have now merged for kids to be mean and cruel to the kid that they target. And so we have to look at, okay, there's a wide network out there. It's constantly changing. I am an immigrant to the internet world. My children, my, my gener I'm, the, I'm third generation here. My children were uh, first generation. And this generation are truly native. They found out about the cell phone in the labor room <laughs> as mom and dad are flashing pictures and the like. And babies will be scrolling uh, with a phone and then pick up a little book and try to scroll it. I mean, it's inherent in them. And we have to look at how we might as parents behave for our kids on the internet. I always talk about three kinds of families, brick wall, jellyfish, and backbone. Now the brick wall uh, family we, is recognizing that connecting to the internet is like opening a door to a new and vast city, which it is. However, some parents look at the ugly and absolutely scary stuff out there and refuse to let the internet become a part of their family life at all. You're not getting on there. It's too dangerous and the like. Well, they'll find ways. Kids will find ways to get on and end up being sneaky, which you don't want them to be. Then there are the parents who are jellyfish who are so ill-informed and have so little desire to be active on it um, that they will let their kids roam down any dark alley on the internet because, well, when I was uh, first generation, there was not a lot of harm on there. Whoa, it has evolved. Then we have what I, I call the backbone parent. A parent with flexibility, you don't get from rigid brick wall, and uh, a parent who has structure um, to help raise responsible, resourceful, resilient, compassionate human beings, you don't get from jellyfish. And we need both flexibility and an environment that's condu conducive to creative, constructive, and responsible activity. And that's that parent who says, I know I'm ignorant about this, so I need to get up to speed. And some of the tools that we can use are right there at the dining table saying to our kid, talk to me about TikTok. Uh, I have no clue what that is. And they're, they'll roll their eyes, but they'll also teach you. They have a lot to teach us. And when we're open, instead of going, oh, that's awful stuff or oh, that, but to be open to it and also learn net safety and net etiquette. If we have to learn it, we have to teach it to our children how to behave. And backbone parents know the internet's here to stay. Mm -hmm. There's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And what we want to do is teach our kids how to be safe on the internet and how to behave on it as responsible, resourceful, resilient, compassionate human beings. So we, we look at the online and offline as having merged, and we have to be immersed with our children in that. Yeah, I agree. And I do think it, um, you can't underestimate the importance of that face to face interaction, either around the dinner table, or just uh, throughout the day of checking in seeing where people are at. Um, in response to the cyberbullying question, are there any things that like, I'm just thinking like in my own life, if we're sitting at the dinner table, if we're having those conversations, are there any things that we should look at that we would think like, uh Oh, you know, my spidey senses are tingling. I've, this is a red flag moment. I guess I'm, I'm trying to find out, are there, are there, I, I know each situation is specific to itself, but are there any typical, like what I would qualify as warning signs to look for? Yes. Sad and sullen after they get off of the computer or off their phone. They don't have anything kind to say about anybody because everybody's attacking them. 
Um, and this, I'm talking about the kid who's targeted. Right. Um, and they um, are uh, not doing so well in school. And you say, but online targeting impacts a kid in the offline world as well. So we need to pick up those signs. But before we even do that, you mentioned the dinner table. The backbone parent has some structure, like no phones at the dinner table. This is our cell phone free area to be able to communicate uh, and talk face to face. So kids learn to read what they're not getting on the cell phone, to read body language, to read a hurt in somebody's voice and recognize that. Uh, because that's one of the pitfalls online that kids will often make miss they express something but it wasn't intentional uh that you did somebody but you did because of the way you said it so mm. having some limits and i one thing i want to absolutely get in here <coughs> is no cell phone in their bedrooms absolutely and it, my, i had my secretary once said my son is uh we got a call from the teacher he's falling asleep but he's going to bed early of course he was i said where's his phone in the room. I said, well, put it in your room and then find out what's going on. Well, he was communicating with kids in Japan. Oh, so even in zone. a different time zone. <laughs> Games <laughs> <laughs> and in nothing bad, but he wasn't getting sleep. And kids will sure. say, but I need an alarm clock, buy him one. But it's out of the bedroom because the majority of cyberbullying occurs after school and in the late hours of night. Oh, that was my next question. Was yeah. are there particular times of day yeah. to be more diligent? So after school, late at night. So if we can limit those times or just put structure around those times, then we can try to help navigate through this zone. Yeah. And our kids will get good sleep because uh, the lack of sleep can lead a kid to be more depressed. And then you add on to that cyber issues and you have a severely depressed child um, because the warning signs that a kid's exhibit after being cyber bullied are similar to those exhibited when they've been bullied in other ways, but it's magnified, it's 24 uh -huh. seven. And you really want to uh, structure it. And, and it's real important that you, when they're very young, because kids have access to tools very young, that you increase responsibilities and decision-making decrease limits and boundaries as they are developing their own backbone around using these tools so that when they leave our homes and our schools, they're making all of their own decisions and responsible for all of their own behavior online. But that means when they're very young, the limits and boundaries are stronger and tighter. They have to be. But as they get older, we need to allow them more freedom online with still having some structure intact to help keep them safe. And also always assure them that if they have ever been targeted, they can tell you and you promise, as hard as this is, you promise not to take their cell phone away. Many kids will not tell you they've been targeted because they're afraid that you will brick wall it and take it away and not allow them online. And they want to know what kids are saying about them. They want. So we're not dealing with the issue very effectively if we do that. So you've got to promise them that. Is there ever time to take it away? Absolutely. If your child is on the other end doing the mean and cruel behaviors, yeah. um, there is a time to be have them removed for a period of time until they've done three R's. Made restitution. Gone online and removed the ugly stuff, sent a message out. I said this mean and cruel rumor about so-and-so uh, if you received it and opened it, please delete it. If you sent it on to others, please delete it because what I did was mean and cruel. Restitution resolution. I want you to tell me how you're going to keep it from happening again. And kid says, I won't ever do that online again. I said, well, that's good. That's what you want to do. What are you going to do instead? And that's where our wisdom comes in as parents, helping them come up with some ways to have good etiquette online, how to welcome kids into games how to respond to somebody who's being mean and cruel to somebody else, to have the courage. I said there were three characters, the bully, the bully, the not so innocent bystander. There's also a fourth character, the brave hearted kid, willing to stand up and speak out, step in, do the right thing when the burden is heavy. 
Mm. And we have to help them do that by walking our talk and talking our walk. So how do you behave online? Are you on it all the time? Will you stop when your child comes home from school and put your electronics down when you say, how are you doing? They walk in fine. Well, you missed the fine when the head was down in the sad voice. Right. Um, and so model it for them first. You have to walk the talk, but then talk the walk. Um, and they may say, well, you're, you're old, you don't understand it at all. And the way I got around that with my grandkids is that said, I, they had to teach me about Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, all of a sudden, a year and a half ago, I was doing all my lectures on Zoom. And I asked all three, a 10 year old, a 12 year old, and a 13 year old, help me out here. And the 10 year old thought it'd be kind of cute to make me into an owl because I'd be a wise teacher. <laughs> and I said, uh, not this time, <laughs> but they were so helpful and they enjoyed it. But while they were doing that, I was also teaching them about safety online and the etiquette online. Every moment can be a teachable moment with them. Now you might have a kid who wasn't targeted, but also didn't instigate the bullying, spreading a rumor, but help spread it. Right. You're one of those not so innocent bystanders or, or looked at TikTok and laughed at the young girl in the lunchroom who was videoed being excluded. I want them to know you're part of the problem too. Now, what can you do to heal with that person that you harm? But I didn't do anything. I only laughed at laughing at somebody's pain is hurtful. Right. And can you kind of talk about what, what happens to a school or a community when that online bullying kind of pro proliferates like that? I know you, what you and I had spoken before about examples that, you'd had. Yes, it destroys community. Martin Buber said, I am I and you are thou and we have a common humanity. That's the we. In bullying, whether it's online or offline, it's making somebody into an it. Um, there was an incident where um, a young boy had his own private Instagram that he shared with just a few people and then videoed some young girls um, and did a racial epitaph nest next to them that was horrible oh and the one of the boys who had received it went to one of the girls that were in that video and shared it with that her, her um she knew people were treating her differently laughing at her and he brought it to her attention because one of the things i tell kids if you're online and you see somebody being mean and cruel to the other person you can be the witness resistor or defender as a brave hearted kid being that witness is to capture it and share it with the kid who's being targeted. They didn't know that rumor was going around that they were pregnant, or they didn't know that rumor was going around that they um, had done something after school that was untrue. But people are treating her, her or him as it was. With those young girls, um, they were devastated, but long before he even told them because others had viewed it and were treating them differently. Right. So we need to take stock of the impact of online targeting of kids because it impacts them offline, right. and whether they know about it or not. So letting them know is being a witness. A resistor is, is saying to the kid who's spreading it, this is ugly. I'm not going to be a part of it. Being a defender is to stand up for the kid who's been targeted mm. and send them a message saying, I'm here with you. I'm okay. supporting you. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, I want to dive into a little more of that cyberbullying and its far-reaching impacts. At what age should I give my child a smartphone? How much screen time should I allow each day? What are the best filters to use on my family's devices? Sound familiar? These questions and more are answered at the Healthy Screen Habits website. We've curated the best articles, books, videos, and many other resources to help you figure out how you want to use technology in your life. Click on the awareness section to learn about the issues and dangers surrounding screen use. Then click on the tools page to download printables you can use with your family today, including the Healthy Screen Habits Family Technology Plan. Visit our website at www.healthyscreenhabits.org for the resources and tools you need to get started. 
My guest is Barbara Coloroso. Before the break, we were talking about the impact that cyberbullying can have on the greater community. Now, Barbara, being the author of six international best-selling books, including the latest edition of The Bullied, The Bullied, and The Not-So-Innocent Bystander, places you in this really highly qualified position to talk about the ways and means of bullying. And I know there's no set pattern for how it looks every time you've shared some of the experiences that you've had. Um, I also recognize that we always, we want to believe in our, in our core that our children would be those brave hearts. But that being said, I'm not so naive as to think that my kids are immune to causing this type of hurt. And I come from a place of believing that knowledge is powerful and I truly believe that education saves lives. So we work to build empathy and create, create connection with community and friends. However, um, I think equally important is the information and education on the ramifications of engaging in the bullying behavior. And I know that you get called to be an expert key witness in many legal cases. I, I was wondering if you could share, just so people understand, what are some of the legal ramifications and outcomes that you have seen within the work that you do? Well, in, in terms of cyberbullying, quite a bit because again it, it affects the offline world as well where a kid is relentlessly targeted and sometimes schools have taken the step back and said well it didn't happen here but now we have a legal both in Canada and the U.S. to take steps if it impacts their educational setting. And so when kids cyberbully another child. Okay, hang on. I want to back up on that. So because I have spoken with school administrators about that, and that is their big fallback on is that, well, if it doesn't happen, if it doesn't happen during school hours, if it doesn't happen on school property, it's beyond our concern. Can you explain, can you unravel that a little bit for me? Absolutely. If it impacts, and it's in both countries, if it impacts the educational environment for the child who's been targeted outside of school online, if it impacts their relationship with others, and it's guaranteed to, uh, how kids view them with an ugly room or how kids view them when they've locked them out of the chat room, well, let's lock them out of the lunchroom. It, it impacts it. We have a, a, an ethical and a legal obligation to respond to it. Now, if it, and it, right now what we're seeing and it's horrific is revenge porn right um which is a criminal offense in both of our countries and that's where you post uh, pictures of a sexual nature that were uh, non-consensual uh and if you're under 16 in some places 18 in others um and you posted it whether it was consensual or not there is an, uh, a possibility that you can become a sex offender oh. in, in your criminal charging of that. Um, and now we're getting even more uh, involved in racial um, and, and sexual bullying uh, es escalating to a hate crime. And so uh, what we're saying is we need to make this a safe environment online and offline for young people. Canada had that <laughs> Amanda Todd story where she was targeted by someone from Europe, but her classmates received the same pictures and they targeted her. She moved to a different school. They had those pictures within five days, compliments uh. to the guy in Europe. Now that didn't happen on school time, but it impacted her profoundly. Of course. Her relationships. So uh, these are serious things. And what we need to help our young people do is a very simple way to respond. If you respond to the cyberbully in any way, whether it's passive or aggressive or assertive, um, it often makes it worse because they will continue it. Whereas offline, if you have an assertive comment, that was mean, that was cruel, I don't need this, I'm out of here, it has an impact. But online, it doesn't as effectively. So I use the uh, simple SCBT, stop, don't respond back as much as you want to. 
copy it because it may not be there when you are reporting it to somebody, it's disappeared. Copy it, block it. Although I want to remind kids it's never gone. There is always metadata backing it up and the footprint right. is still there. Right. And just copy, to be copy. clear, just to be clear, when you say copy it, that means like take a screenshot of what, yeah. what has happened. Okay. Yes. Block it. And all, if you don't know how to do it as, as a parent, ask your kid. Right. And if they don't, there's always YouTube. YouTube is yes, a is. great source of information. Yeah, and Common Sense Media has phenomenal resources online for any parent who's really struggling with this. Um, I refer to them often. Uh, and then the last one is, is to tell a trusted adult. So you as a parent need to be assured, assured that you have informed your children that they can tell you anything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I think that key component goes to what you were talking about earlier with they can, you need, they need to know that they can tell you without the ramification of their phone getting taken away because yes. that will force them into a position where they are no longer comfortable coming to you as an ally. Because they are afraid you will right. take it away. And this is part of their life. But we want to maybe perhaps help them block certain people, get them engaged in other online communities, um, and then also report it to the online sites. And I know there's a lot in the news about how they've not responded and the like, but again, in both of our countries, uh, people are saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, we have to do more. Um, Rafi, uh, this great singer. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Rafi. Um, has been a strong advocate for holding these platforms accountable that if you are going to allow students on it, young children on it, you have an obligation. We have an obligation to help our kids, but you have an obligation to help make it safe. You have the tools, you have the finances, and you have the skill. Yes. And, and so we need to not just say, oh, it's all up to just us because we cannot. New things are coming online so rapidly that we need to be active ourselves just as Rafi is. Go right. online to Rafi, you'll find him. I, and how he has actually been very involved. I had no idea. Holding, I just um, I just know of Rafi from sing-along days in the car. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> he, he has a, a whole uh, thing about treating children with dignity and regard. And he's taken on the big companies about, okay, what are you doing? Because truly often police will say, we don't know what to do. Um, they will say that we never even knew about this. Uh, some of the trends that have gone on to, that are horrible about right. uh, suicides and the like, we can't all keep up with it. So we need the help of the big companies that are benefiting from this. Okay, we have to take a short break, but when we come back, I'm going to ask Barbara Coloroso for her healthy screen habit. U.S. listeners, listen up. There are two Senate bills that would provide the most robust new online protections for children in nearly 25 years. And they are now at a pivotal moment we need your help to help get them passed. The Kids Online Safety Act, or COSA, and the Children and Teens Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPA, have the potential to make the digital world much safer for young people by banning surveillance advertising to children, holding big tech accountable for exploiting kids through bad design, and more. Earlier this year, the bills were advanced by Senate Commerce Committee and now have the potential to be voted on by the full Senate before midterm elections in November. That's where you come in. We need you to call your senators, email your senators for support in these essential bills. Urge your senators to push these bills to the finish line and vote yes to support and protect American kids and teens from big tech's exploitive business model. 
I'm talking with Barbara Coloroso, creator and founder of Kids Are Worth It, an organization whose mission is to contribute to raising responsible, resourceful, resilient, compassionate human beings who can stand up for themselves and others and respects the rights and essential needs of others. I want to be that person. <laughs> I look at that and I'm like, that's are. not, that's not just a mission statement for an organization. That's like a personal mission statement. I feel like that exemplifies the best of humanity. And how do we get there? Well, I'll go back to walk your talk and talk your walk. So how do you treat hired help? How do you treat somebody moving through the grocery store a little slower than you'd like them to? How do you treat the new neighbor who looks different? who has a different language as their first language, who uh, eats different foods, has a different faith tradition. Your children are watching. Yeah. And uh, offline, how do you treat the bigoted relative at the family gathering? We all have them. Yes. <laughs> and if they tell a bigoted or racist comment, or you've seen something online that they've shared with your child, are you willing to stand up when it's uncomfortable to do? Are you willing to say that was bigoted, that was racist, that was sexist um, uh, and uh, I don't need this. Even when your mother comes and said, look, it's Uncle George, he's old. Old is never an excuse for bigotry and intolerance, online or offline. And we see so much of this online today between adults. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have adults targeting kids at uh, uh, school board meetings uh, as they're going to school with their masks on and the like. And so we have to stand up and speak out for our young people. When you stand up at the dinner table and say, that was a bigoted comment, I don't need this. And your mother says, but it's Uncle George. Can you say, it's not about age. It's never appropriate to make those kind of comments, those bigoted racial or sexual comments. And you've stood up, you go in the dining room, everybody shuts up. But the chance of your child being that fourth character, that brave-hearted kid online and off because they've seen you do it. It's okay to share with them that you found something ugly online and this is how you're handling it, mm. that you're blocking someone because uh, of the negative things they've said or you've responded back. You walking your talk has a lot more impact on young people. Even though we think in the teen years, oh, we're losing them. No, they're still counting on us. We are their parent before they reach puberty, their model and their guide during puberty, uh, and then in adulthood, hopefully you become a good friend. They do pick out your nursing home. Uh, <laughs> you know. And so we, but we don't want to be a friend to them in the teen years. We want to be their model and guide. If you need a friend, find somebody your own age. Um, you know, but we need to be there and show them. We have to be actively involved in the online world that they're involved in. I love Let's that. So I think I think that's your healthy screen habit, isn't it? The the be it involved is. or I mean just the the developing is that if you could sum up your yeah. your healthy screen habit, your tip or takeaway, what it would, would you... be if the internal moral code that you help your young people develop. Mm -hmm. Develop to care deeply, share generously, help willingly. Those are the antidotes to hating, hoarding, and harming the virulent agents ripping apart the fabric of our humanity today. If we can do that online and offline, help our young people learn to care deeply about others. You don't have to like the kid. I tell them, you don't have to like them. You must honor their humanity. And how do you honor that disagreeing with them? How do you honor that when they feel left out? When you help them develop that inner discipline, that inner moral code to do the right thing, because it's the right thing to do. James Natchway, a Canadian war photographer, said it so beautifully, do good because good is good to do. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Barbara, you've generously offered our listeners a copy of an essential guide for educators on bullying based on your international bestseller, The Bully, the Bullied, and the Not-So-Innocent Bystander, that I will link to the show notes in this episode, which is episode 11 of season two. And additionally, you've offered our listeners a handout on the same topic that can be shared with schools and parents. So both of these resources will be 
linked and I hope people access them, take them to your schools, take them to your communities and share what you know. I cannot thank you enough for your time and expertise and really truly your life work. Thank you, Hillary. And I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to share it. I I believe our, this next generation is going to make a world of difference, making it a more deeply caring place. For more information, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Healthy Screen Habits. Make sure to visit our website, healthyscreenhabits.org, where you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts or via RSS, so you'll never miss an episode. It's free, it's fun, and you get a healthy new screen habit each week. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate you giving us a quick rating. It really does help other people find us and spread the word of healthy screen habits. Or if you'd simply like to tell a friend, we'd love that too. I so appreciate you spending your time with me this week, and I look forward to learning more healthy habits together.